Hello. Uh, today we're going to take our first look at variables. I'm Dr. Angela Siegel, and let's just dive in. So we'll cover a first introduction of what variables are and where we can use them. Assignment statements, we'll look at different data types. So data comes in many forms, and we'll explore some of those today. We'll look at naming conventions, so what do we call uh, our variables so that they make sense to us, but they also make sense to people that look at our code later. We'll look at those things that never change, that are constant. And we'll also look at information that we'd like to leave behind for humans that read our code, called comments. So the goals of today will be to uh, be able to declare and initialize variables and constants. We'll want to understand the properties and the limitations of a couple of our different number data types, integers and floating point numbers, and also to appreciate the importance of comments and good code layout. If you're following along in the book, uh, we're using Big Java Late Objects, and this would be found in section 2.1. So a variable is just a, a named storage location in a computer program. It's a place that we're going to hold information there are many different types of variables. Uh, we're just going to touch on a few today. Um, but to declare one, to say, here it is, I want to use it, first you have to tell it what type of data you plan to store. Is it a number? Is it a string? Uh, and what name do you wish to refer to this piece of information? So I have a place I want to store it. What do I want to call that location? And what is the initial value? Uh, that you want to hold. That's optional. We can always uh, add information to that later. And you use something called an assignment statement to put a value into a variable. And so we're going to step through that process, but that's the big picture. So most computer programs hold values in named storage locations. Programmers name these so that they are easily accessible and referred to. So there are many different types or sizes of storage that we can hold things in, and we'll also explore what that means and what the limitations are of uh, choosing the wrong size, for instance. So what's the idea behind variables? If I want to be able to find something later, I have to know where I've put it. So imagine your computer is just this big car park and you need to find your car in a parking space. If you don't have a way to refer to that location so that you can remember where you put something, if it's big enough, it might be hard to find your car. Let's say my car is, is parked in space EV17. All I have to do is find EV17 uh, and, and when I go there, I'll find what I'm looking for, which is my little white car. So the first thing that we have to do to make use of something is declare a variable. Tell the computer, we plan to use this and this is what we plan to call it. So you declare the variable by telling that computer the, the type, the size of the variable you need and what name you will use to refer to it. So for instance, um, here we have, uh, we're gonna declare an integer variable and we're going to call it number of tires. Uh, on the next line, we're going to declare another integer variable, and we will call, we wish to refer to it as year of car. And here on this this second declaration, we're also going to give it an initial value. So we are not only declaring year of car as an integer variable, but we are also initializing it with the value 2015. So note. Uh, variable declaration statements end in semicolons. When we initialize a variable, uh, which is not mandatory, but a good idea, all we have to do is supply uh, that, that value after an equal sign. So it's common to declare and initialize a variable at the same time. So if we come into IntelliJ, um, we can see there are several different ways that we can do this. Uh, so not only can we specify that we wish to have an integer and we want to have it age, uh, maybe age of me <laughs> and age of Bob. We can actually declare 
more than one variable on the same line. So if we have two integers, um, we can actually declare them in a big row. We can have um, age of uh, Carly and age of Dylan. All of those can happen on the same line. This is something that I thought is, is worth mentioning because it is sometimes time saving if you're declaring several that you plan to make use of later. So now we have these variables that are ready to hold information. We'll cover the different data types that we can make use of uh, as we go on. But for now, we've seen an example of an integer. So we have these these variables ready to store information and, and maybe some of them we've already initialized. For example, in our previous uh, in our previous example, we had in, in two integer variables that we declared number of tires and year of car and then we initialized year of car. If we want to change what's held in number of tires, in this case, pl place into it its first value, um, we want what's called an assignment statement. So once it's already been declared, we can also change what's held in that variable. And the way that we do that is by using an assignment statement. We list the, the variable name, we follow that by an equal sign, and anything that's found to the right of that equal sign is what gets placed into the variable. So in this case, we have uh, an integer variable number of tires, and on this last line, we're going to use an assignment statement, and we're going to place a four into number of tires. Note that this, this int year of car equals 2015, that's actually uh, an initialization statement. Note that assignment statements also end in semicolons. There is a trend. So be very careful. The equal sign, it's very tempting to think that that's also a way that we might compare things. This is not the case, and so we have to be really careful. We'll learn later how we do comparison. It assigns, and one single equal sign assigns the value on the right-hand side into the variable on the left-hand side. And we'll learn about the comparison operator in a bit, so don't worry, I won't leave you hanging on that one. So what's happening? Here we have uh, an integer variable age of Bob equals 17. And on the next line, and so that's our declaration and initialization of the variable age of Bob. And then on the next line, we have an assignment statement, age of Bob equals 18. So he apparently got a year older. So on this first piece, we see the first thing that happens is we declare age of Bob to be an integer variable. So we tell the computer what type it is, and we uh, we give it a name. And so what the computer does, it says, right, I've got to preserve some space in my system. And I know that it's an integer. So that's going to take a certain amount of size to store. And I'm going to call that age of Bob. Done. That first line there, int age of Bob equals 17 does another thing, right? It also initializes that variable. And so at that point, the computer says, okay, well, I know where age of Bob is held. And I'm going to store in it uh, the number 17, okay? And the third step uh, on the next line is the computer reads age of Bob equals 18, which is an assignment statement. It says, I know where age of Bob is held, and now they want to take what's on the right-hand side of that equal sign, 18, and place it in, uh, change what's held in age of Bob. And so that that is what takes place as we go through that. So what about in this case? So now we've got age of Bob equals 18. Um, and this was uh, a previously, so we can assume if we see that age of Bob equals 18, we can assume that was a previously defined variable, we hope. Uh, because if we refer to age of Bob and it has not yet been defined, then what happens is we'll get an error. Uh, because it has to already exist as a as a place. I can't refer to something that hasn't been specified yet. So in this case, we know that that's happened, and there's an assignment statement that changes what's held in Age of Bob, and uh, and so now 18 is held there. On the next line, we see we've got Age of Bob equals Age of Bob plus four. So we're referring to itself in order to uh, change 
change what's held in the variable. So what would that be? Uh, in fact, what first happens is that we calculate, the computer will say, okay, well, I don't know what to hold. I know where I'm going to change information. I'm going to change what's held in the variable age of Bob. Um, and the first thing it does is it figures out what's on the right-hand side of that equal sign. So it's going to calculate what's held there. And it looks for the information that's held in age of Bob, adds 4 to it, and would determine that that's equal to 22. So that all takes place before we make any changes. At that point, once we have uh, figured out what is on the right-hand side of the equal sign, we take that back and we store the result in the variable named on the left. So this just happens to be that we're using the same variable on both sides of the equation. Um, it needn't be the case, um, but it's one that people find the most confusing at first. So the calculation on the right-hand side is done first, and then we place it back into that, that variable. How are declarations and assignments different? Uh, we see on the first line we have an integer uh, variable declared and initialized, and on the this last line we have an assignment statement where we set age of Bob equal to 18. Do they feel like they do about the same thing? Declarations, that first example, they define the new variable and they can give it an initial value. Assignment statements modify something that already exists. So declaration happens when there is no variable in existence and assignment takes place when uh, modifying the value of an existing variable. So let's take a look at a few data types. So there are several different data types in Java. Whole numbers, which we refer to as ints or integers, uh, like the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all of our counting numbers are ints. Decimal numbers, uh, which could be floats and doubles, uh, referred to as double, as you see here, 8.88. .88. A sequence of characters, which the computer knows as strings, and you'll note that string is capitalized. We'll see that later. So why are there different data types? Why would we need different data types? The idea is that if we go back to the car park analogy, parking spaces might be needed in different sizes for different types of vehicles. If we really wanted to preserve space, uh, the way that we store a scooter versus a bicycle versus a motorcycle, car, van, or an electric vehicle, they're all very different because they need different things. Right? We wouldn't put a vehicle charger at the bicycle <laughs> parking space. Um, so we need to treat them differently. Um, and they come in different sizes. Uh, a little kid on a scooter takes up less space than an adult bike and certainly need, has different needs than a motorized scooter. So now we have all of these and we're going to have to give them names. And probably in math courses you've had, you've had to name variables on your own. Uh, but when you're handwriting things, there's some challenges in creating long names because of the fact that it takes time to write. But in a computer, we'll see that giving them logical, meaningful names really makes a difference in the long run. And we have the added assist that the computer will autofill many of these for us. Our IDs are, are very helpful in this way. So the name should describe the purpose. So a speed of car in kilometers per hour in KPH is much better than using a variable named S, which I might do if I was writing this out by hand, or KPH. We can see why somebody might use S for speed or KPH to at least explain the units of the speed of that car. But if you're reading through a program later, it's a lot easier to understand what KPH what was referring to or what S meant if we read speed of car in kilometers per hour. So uh, we'll take a look uh, real quick in IntelliJ, the reason that I say, so the first time you type speed of car in KPH, it takes you time to write it out. The next time you can type the first couple letters, hit tab, and it's there. Uh, 
So, so there's, there's no real added cost in typing that out. And there's real value in referring back to this later. In terms of the, the actual characters we can use in creating those detailed variable names, uh, they must start with either a letter or an underscore character. So names must begin with a letter or underscore. And there, there are special times that we use underscores to start variable names. Um, for the most part, you'll want to be starting all of your variable names with a letter. Typically, we start um, lowercase. So names after the first letter, you can include letters, uh, upper or lowercase. You can use digits, any of the zero through nine. Um, and you can also use the underscore. You can't use other special symbols. So you can't put a dash or a question mark or percentage, um, any of these things, or spaces. Uh, you can't use Java reserved words. So the words that you'll find that we introduce in Java, um, for instance, int and double, th those can't be the names of your variables. Uh, and then you'll notice that I've been typing things in a unique way. Um, and that is sometimes referred to uh, camel hump notation. So we generally start off with a lowercase word, um, such as speed, and then we capitalize the first letter of every word after that. So speed of car. And you'll see I've done that in all of my examples. Speed of car in KPH, age of me, age of Bob, age of Carly. The next piece is constants. So sometimes, as I mentioned, there are things that never change. So right here, we've got pounds per kilogram. That is something that will not change. It's like gravity or pi. Uh, these things won't change. And so uh, so we, we don't want people to be able to make changes to them. And, and the way that we do that is when we define the variable, we label it as final. And at, after that, that value can never be changed. So when you initialize it, you cannot then later use an assignment statement and update pounds per kilogram. So in this case, I'm going to go back here, um, and I'm more exam uh, exact here in my number, 2.205 uh, pounds per kilogram. I say final. So that final reserved word says, you may never change this. And you'll note that I changed uh, the name and I've made it all in capital letters. And I did that for a reason. Um, generally in constants, the naming convention is that we would use capital letters. Um, and that just lets people know as they read through the code that that's something that's, that's predefined and should not be changed. Okay, and so then you'll see in IntelliJ, it has thankfully highlighted in red the one place that I've used pounds per kilogram. Because I changed the name, I must change it here. Um, and when I run it, it should run exactly the same. Um, just this time, it has, uh, we've noted more appropriately that pounds per kilogram is something that should never be modified. Okay, so that final reserved word indicates that it can't be modified. And you'll note that it's customary, as I mentioned, for the constant variable names to be all in uppercase. And this time, because you can't use camel hump notation to differentiate between new words, what we do is we spread them out by using an underscore. So the reason it is best to use named constants uh, is because it helps explain numerical values that we use in calculations. For example, uh, here, if we said double kilogram in a bag of bagels is equal to the pound in bag of bagels divided by 2.205, you might be able to figure out from context in this scenario because of the naming convention that we've used, uh, it's clear that we're doing a conversion. But in general, even if it's you that's coming back to your own code, it's really helpful if you just explain to them why you're doing something. And so that can come in many forms and we'll see comments later, but it also comes from just being really clear um, in your naming conventions. So a programmer reading this through for the first time would have to think at least about why you use the 2.205. Um, but if, if we have a constant pounds per kilogram, it's pretty clear. So to change the constant in multiple places, um, the great piece is that you only 
only the initialization must be changed. We are not all computers. As I mentioned, some of the time, this the reason that we give these long names is for the humans. Uh, and so for that, we're going to step into comments. Comments are there for the humans in the loop. So why do we use comments? We use comments at the beginning of the program uh, to specify what the program will do and throughout to clarify some details of the code. They're there as a courtesy to others that might look at your code later, including you. And uh, the compiler, the computer, it's not there for the computer at all. So the compiler completely ignores these comments. It doesn't change whether or not a program runs. The computer doesn't care at all. So comments come in a few different styles. They can be single line comments where you just include two slashes and everything to the right of that is, is ignored as a comment. It could be multi-line, so a longer description of what something is going to do. And then finally, there's something called multi-line Java doc comments. And so this will normally be at the start of your program, the explanation of, of what takes place. We're going to cover a bit more of that later. Um, in fact, we'll have a separate video on commenting, but um, but these these actually are used for uh, creating documentation around what the program does. So here's an example where we have pounds of flour equals a kilogram weight of flour times the pounds per kilogram. And then on the next line, we see that we set pounds per kilogram, uh, we declare it as a constant, and we initialize it. This will cause an error because what we're doing is we're using a variable before we've defined it. And so you must define a variable before use, which means somewhere above the line of code where you first use that variable pounds per kilogram, you better have already declared, um, declared it. So the correct order for this statement is um, to declare and initialize pounds per kilogram first, and then later we can make use of it freely. That's it for variables, so we're going to get a chance to play with more, uh, but for now, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more to come. Next up, arithmetic. It's like the stuff you do on your calculator.